if you ever take your birds off the farm either for show or vets or for auction or trade or what have you and you have the option of uh, not giving away the crate with the bird as is the case with uh, the auctions I go to you might want to consider making some of these um, there's fancier nicer ones there's some I've seen that are basically cabinet quality um, you know they're they're practically a piece of furniture really well made um, I made these probably about 2010 2011 and I had to make a lot of them in a short amount of time I was taking a bunch of birds up to a show in Michigan uh, the Frankenmuth Fowl Festival and didn't have anything to carry them in so between this and gutting a 14-foot camper that's how I got to the show and these pens uh, these these uh, crates I should say have held up fairly well there's a couple drawbacks to the way they're designed but I'll just talk you through it so what you're looking at is some just cheap plywood matter of fact this plywood actually comes on pallets um, if I remember correctly, it comes on the bottom of a pallet full of five-gallon buckets. Uh, I think I traded the guy for this pet, this this lumber for um, some other type of lumber. You know, one of the things you just stockpile things you can trade it. So it's a approximately four foot by two by two, if I recall. Um, and it's a five stall made for large fowl. The dimensions of these stalls are basically the same as what you would find in a commercially made cardboard shipping box. Uh, as you see, there's three lids. That's one of the drawbacks is I would probably recommend you oversize your lids just a little bit so you can overlap them or possibly run a piece of one by here for a lip on the inside of the top so that you can have individual lids because you have to be strategic in thinking about which bird you put in which stall because obviously you have to take these two out before you can take this one out before you can take these two out or you know you can rearrange it so you can get these two out and these two and then this one last or this one first or whatever uh, I just secure it with a zip tie in the front. Hinges are, again, zip ties. There's not a single nail or glue or anything in this thing. It's all holes and zip ties. And once I made the first one, I just used it as a jig, and I just started cutting pieces, throwing the first one over it, and just started punching holes. So they all lined up, and they're interchangeable. Uh, made this air slot front and back runs the length of it more or less and zip tied some hardware mesh uh, hail screen over it just to keep the birds from getting at each other the handles again nothing fancy piece of rope double knotted on the inside that's it uh, solid bottom underneath um, if I were to build these today I would probably cut them down to just a four stall reason being is by the time you're reaching over the top and to the handles it's about all the arm span I've got to handle one of these not that it's super heavy you know depends on what you've got in for birds but a four stall would just be more manageable, I feel. But that also means you're not optimizing the plywood. You know, you're cutting it short and you've got some strips that I suppose, and you know, you could use them for lids, but I don't know. The other thing that I do like about this, however, is being this is how all of the central dividers are held in with the zip ties uh, I can modify the stalls 
case in point, my mom raises large fowl phoenix and her males get very long tails. So what I'll do, uh, I've done this to a few of them that she has back at the old farm, is I've taken out one or two of the middle dividers to give a larger area for a male with a long tail. And I've actually considered making uh, dividers that run lengthwise so that you can put two Phoenix males in there side by side. And um, I remember seeing some photos, I want to say it was in a National Geographic from the 70s about Onagadores, which are a cousin to the Phoenix, uh, ancestor to the Phoenix actually. And the carrying cases they had for those birds were very compartmentalized. You had a section for the body, a section for the head, and a section for the tail. And um, the bird was kept in a seated position to prevent it from trampling the tail. Um, I might do something like that for her birds if she starts showing them more, but she's not showing them that much right now. Uh, you know, just one thing. She's got other things to do. She just likes having them around. That's really all that matters. Um, the problem I have with having them in a seated position, though, and why I'm not completely sold on that design is the shows around here are usually several hours drive for us. And in my mind, it's better to have a coop that a bird can stand up, move around in whenever you come to a stop, as opposed to constantly being crouched. I mean, if you've ever rode in the back of a car when somebody's got their seat all the way back and your knees are pressed up against your belly, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, they're lightweight. Again, using materials somebody would have thrown away. I had some hail screen laying around, so really all this cost me was zip ties and time. And that's one thing, you know, if you're short on money, sometimes you just got to spend more time and uh, make something out of nothing. But there you have it. Show crates on the cheap.